Hello and welcome to Ginny's Horse Product Review. I'm Ginny and today I'm going to tell you how to pick a boarding stable. Whether you're buying your first horse or you're moving your horse to a new stable, you need to know red flags, how to narrow down your list, and basically just how to pick a boarding stable. There are a ton of different stables out there. Some of them are great, some of them are not so great. There's a huge variation in prices, so you have to know your budget and things like that. And let's go ahead and get started on how to pick a boarding stable. First things first, you need to know what your horse's minimum care requirements are. Is your horse the type of horse that needs to be in a stall? Does he need to be in a pasture 24 seven? What kind of turnout do you need? This is gonna be the first thing you need to evaluate when you're picking a boarding stable. Does your horse need a dry lot? What medical conditions or anything like that need to be managed? This is the most important part of picking a boarding stable and it is figuring out what your non-negotiable horse care requirements are. So for my horses, they need turnout. We gotta get them out and moving around. I can't have Bamboozle in a stall. He's a senior, he's got arthritis. He does not do well when he's locked up. So once you figure this out, and go ahead and get a piece of paper and write this down. These are your non-negotiables. You need to start writing down what you would like for amenities. Maybe you're into natural horsemanship and you need a round pen. Uh, perhaps you're a dressage person, you need a dressage ring, things like that. You need to write down what amenities you would like um, as far as creature comforts, training, and things, things like that. So do you need a wash rack? Do you need a climate controlled tack room? Things like that. This is going to be your list of amenities that you need personally, not just things that your horse needs. Okay, so once you have that list, you kind of know um, what you're looking for now. You can kind of weed out places that aren't going to be a good candidate for you and you can just kind of narrow the playing field. Now one of my favorite ways to get um, a boarding stable is to ask for personal recommendations. And this kind of goes both ways because people are just as likely to recommend a place to you as they are to tell you where not to go. And I know that there can be drama at different barns. You never know what's going on. If you weren't there, you know, there's two sides to every story. But if somebody pulls you aside and tells you, you know, kind of quietly or sends you a private message and says, hey, this happened to my horse, beware, or things like that, you know, take that into account. You know, personal recommendations are important too. If you're new in town, you don't know anybody, find a Facebook group for the local area. Um, go on there and ask, hey, can anybody recommend a barn? This is what I'm looking for. I need access to trails or I need pasture boarding or things like that. You'll get recommendations. And also ask if anybody would like to tell me where not to go, feel free to private message me. Not everybody wants to, you know, put a barn on blast. The, the horse world is a very small world and somebody's more likely to tell you something um, confidentially or in private than they are just to blast somebody out, you know, online. So your next step, once you've narrowed these barns down, you got some recommendations, you need to go visit these places. You need to look critically at things like feed rooms, cleanliness, fencing, um, you know, how do the horses look? Most importantly, how do the horses look that live there? Are they really overweight? Are they really skinny? You need to get an idea of the kind of care that the horses that live there are already getting. And if you do see a horse that doesn't look like it's in good condition, maybe ask about it. Perhaps it's a new horse, um, you know, from a rescue or things like that, or it's bouncing back from who knows what. So it is good to ask if it's something that you're concerned about. And, you know, make sure you just, just get a good look at the place water buckets, hay, you name it. And you know, overall, you wanna trust your gut. If you go someplace and you have a really good feeling about it, that's, I think that's a really good indicator that that's probably gonna be a good fit for you and your horse. If you go there and you don't have a great feeling about it, listen to your instincts because I've, <laughs> I've had that feeling and it's been accurate a lot of times. Also, take note of any red flags you might see, issues you may potentially run into down the road. And some of these might not necessarily be deal breakers, but you want to just, you want to know what you're getting into. So just look with a critical eye. Two other very important, some of the most important aspects beyond what your horse's needs are and what your needs are is where the barn is located. Is this five minutes from your house? Are you going to be able to see your horse every day or is this an hour away? And this is something that I've been pretty flexible on in the past because if you find an incredible barn, it is worth the drive. It's better than a barn that's five minutes away that you're not gonna be happy with or your horse isn't gonna get the best care with. So again, you need to decide what you're willing to spend in gas money 
and you know your time and how often you think you can get out there and what's most important to you as far as location uh, also we can't not talk about budget there is such a huge variability in pricing for horse boarding you can get um, very affordable pasture boarding in a lot of places or you can get full care you know twelve hundred dollars a month and up things like that so definitely you know figure out what your budget is too because you're going to be able to narrow down your barns based on your budget and again your location finally just do your best to pick the stable that's going to be the best fit for you and your horse and remember sometimes we have to make compromises you may not get everything you want but the most important thing is that your horse's care needs are being met for your individual horse whether they have metabolic issues or easy keepers hard keepers things things like that the most important thing is that your horse is being well taken care of this is another thing that can go back to your location if it's not as great of a place but it's right next to your house you can go out all the time and check on your horses in the past when i've been at barns with kind of less than stellar monitoring of horses i've made friends with other boarders there and we've kept an eye on each other's horses so if you're going out you could take a look at your friend's horses and say hey jasper looks good today or so and so's got a puffy eye you probably need to come out and see him so these are you know these are things that not every boarding stable is going to be perfect and you may have to make compromises but you can you can do a lot to make things work and make sure that your horse is being well cared for regardless of whatever situation you're in if you're looking for a stable i hope you find a great one i've been there we've moved several times in the past couple of years and it's always it's always tough shopping for a new boarding barn but I'm confident if you go through this list and you find out what you need and your horse needs and do all this stuff, you're gonna find the great boarding place for you and your horse. If you found this video helpful, definitely subscribe and hit the like button. I really appreciate it and it helps me out a lot. Until next time, happy trails.